Hi there, this is Carrie Cassidy, Project Camelot Whistleblower Radio, and very happy to be here on this Friday night. My guests tonight are Laura Eisenhower, one of my favorite people, actually, <laughs> and Dr. Dream. And I don't know him as well, but uh, I imagine anyone who associates with Laura has got to be gangbusters, basically, and a wonderful uh-huh. person. And so... Um, <laughs> As far as an introduction, let me say that you can go to the front page of Project Camelot and click on uh, the guest bios, and I've got quite a bio page set up for them there for both of their bios, and hopefully that will cover uh, most of the information that you need to know. But I am assuming that most of the listeners will be familiar already to some degree, at least with Laura, um, and uh, you know we're going to find out more. So. Why don't we do this, uh, Laura and, and Dr. Dream, why don't uh, you take turns introducing yourselves uh, in whatever way you see fit, and then uh, we'll sort of go from there. Great. Great. Yeah, and who wants well, to go? I don't know. Oh, I'll go first. I, I just see a little thing here. Um, yeah, my name is Laura Magdalene Eisenhower, and I consider myself a galactic historian, a cosmic mythologist, a global alchemist, um, and I'm just – really uh just an advocate for the earth for gaia for the return of the divine feminine unity consciousness uh, the balancing of the masculine and feminine energies on the planet right now and just exposing the deeper deeper layers of the military industrial complex and everything that's going on um in secrecy that we really need to know about so that's just a little bit about me love it this is dr dream and um, in addition to being a holistic healing practitioner and uh, really specializing in multiple modalities, I, I work with um, 16 to 18 uh, different tools and modalities. Um, I also uh, have the honor of uh, traveling around the world speaking about the nature of reality and doing um, a group energetic that I started three years ago called the Universal Love Galactivation. And in the last 36 months, we've gone to 99 cities around the world and done, uh, um, we facilitated 159 of these experiences now for thousands of people. So um, exciting stuff. Wow, uh, that's fascinating. So you've gone to 99 cities in, in how long? Uh 36 months. In three years, we've done this. That's incredible. Uh, well, uh, kudos to you. That's got to be a pretty st- strenuous uh, travel schedule. You know, because of the nature of uh, the experience, which is a very high um, vibe energetic, um, it's been um, a real treat for me to do it. And it's given me more than it's taken out of me. That's for sure. Okay, well, I, I, you know, yeah, sounds very cool. Uh, so what I'd like to do, I guess, you, you know, I, I, I know that you, um, well, I don't know, <laughs> I don't want to uh, offend you, so, but I think you're a couple, right? Yes. Yeah, we're okay. definitely a couple. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, you know, when I say, you know, when I re- re- relate to both of you, you know, I'm inviting both of you on my show, and you're. You both invited me on your show, your joint show, which was we had a lot of fun tonight, um, I have to say. Uh, it, you know, what I'd like to do here is is kind of go places that the two of you would like to go. And I will try, um, you know, because I've got two people to sort of juggle here. And I'd like to both of you, um, you know, uh, one after the other. And um, so we don't kind of all jump in because uh, we're all, I think, very verbal. <laughs> But, but it just takes a little management. So um, what I'd like to do is is basically kind of start off with what you think of what happened during, you know, let's see, uh, you know, December 21st, 2012, and how you passed that time, uh, maybe a few days before and a few days after, however you want to relate to that. And whether you had any comments about 2013 and the last month or so, how you've been experiencing that for yourself and, and also, you know, how people have been coming up to you and, and what, what you've been getting back from other people. So we could start off with uh, Laura and then we can go to Dr. Dream. Well, great. Um, first of all, I want to thank you for having me on. You're absolutely one of my favorite people and it's just always so wonderful to be in your company. Well, 
to talk about the December 21st this time. I, after letting go of thoughts of being in Egypt with you and Michael Tellinger and everybody, um, we decided to stay close to home and, you know, be with our children. Um, I have two boys that are twins. They're 14, and he has a daughter uh, who's 12, and so our families are merged, and we all got to spend that time together. Um, for us, it was really just building up. The energies were really building up, and I was feeling just, wow, um, just a lot moving through, just really paying attention to the global energies and just really feeling the unification and all of us just really trying to anchor the higher dimensional energy and just, you know, stay grounded. I think a lot of us felt a little bit, you know, poked here and there like we always kind of are. A lot of us are so used to it at this point. But um, up until uh, that peak time around 3.30 a.m. here or 3.14, um, about, I don't know, a couple hours beforehand, I started to do uh, shuffling with my cards. I've been using them for over 20 years, you know, really working energy and just processing. That's just kind of the tool I use, um, you know, for my personal stuff and global stuff. Um, so I started shuffling and I was just sort of feeling this weird energy and just, you know, wanted to work with it. Uh, as we got closer to the peak time, the energies just like, you know, were really kind of slamming us a, a bit. And so I, I was shuffling and, and, and asking about timelines and just, you know, what we were going through and what was uh, the dominant forces that were really at play. Um, and so the first reading I got based on that uh, was a little bit disturbing because I got the tower card and then the balance card, the justice card upside down, which would be you know, absolute and total imbalance, followed by the devil. <laughs> and uh, the devil, of course, is not a bad card in the tarot. It depends on what's around it. So when it's with the balance card that's upside, that doesn't feel like a very good thing. So I'm thinking, ooh, pull, sh you know, some sort of big shift, some sort of weird thing. And uh, so I just shuffle like I do because I use it as a tool to work energy rather than look at it as a fixed anything. And I just, you know, put my consciousness out there with everybody like you guys in Egypt and just really just focused in on our unification, just everything that we've all been working really hard at and just just shuffled through it. And then uh, all of a sudden, you know, the, the, the tower card came up again, this time with death and then good fortune, the empress, the emperor, the sun in the world. And it was like this major like major arcane is like six of them. And it was just incredible. <laughs> and I was just like, whoa. Uh, and, and it just seemed like, wow, okay, you know, we, we, we got this on track. The portals are going to open, this and that. And I know everybody was feeling this, that we're there, and that we're really working this energy as well. And so around that peak point, I mean, I was literally sitting there and breathing really, really deep and feeling like I was just really in the heart of the galactic core, just taking these huge breaths, almost like, you know, one would see a, a ma like, just masterful breaths that I normally can't even do because I, you know, I kind of talk fast. I have a lot of nervous energy. I'm always just trying to stay grounded, but I felt this like magnetic pull into the center and I was just breathing really, really deep and just letting the oxygen just go into my body and just anchoring myself. And luckily him and I, you know, our, our, our vibration was very harmonious. We, we get slammed a lot and it kind of disrupts our, our energies, you know, especially before events. So we got ourselves, you know, we were in a really good space as well and we just rode through it. It felt great. And, um, you know, the next day it just, uh, it just felt this high. I felt, uh, a lot of neutrality and detachment, you know, even seeing things still being sprayed in the sky. It was like, I just, I just didn't, it just didn't hook me in at all into any sort of concern or urgency like I normally feel, which is to just, just kind of work it. I just felt like we had really, you know, crossed over. The portals had been opened. But what I also got the sense of was, like a, a patient with cancer, the immune system has been activated. It's strong enough to heal the cancer, but the disease is still there, sort of hanging there. Kind of like this archonic etheric grid energy or the reverse Nephilim that Lisa, you know, calls it. Or just that false matrix occult technology that likes to siphon our energy and use our, our you know, kundalini and all that that harvests it and uses it against us. Um, you know, I felt the portal had opened, but that was still hanging there because, you know, consciousness – on so many levels in humanity is still attached to those programs. And, you know, I didn't have the terminology for it. It was just more a thought form of what I was identifying with. And, you know, after talking to you and after reading, you know, other people that I really, you know, respect their, their viewpoints and what they make of it, we're definitely feeling similar things, but using it, you know, different terminology for it. Um, but yeah, so it's like, there's still just a lot for us to do, but what I felt with the portal opening 
was that the activation has happened and that we have gotten over the hump and it was just a huge victory. I just felt a huge victory. And beforehand, you know, after talking, speaking at Star Knowledge Conferences and going there for the Venus Transits and being, you know, at the place that Andrew Bashago went to the Mars Training Program and viewing the Venus Transit through a telescope randomly at the College of the Siskiyous because we got invited there randomly, which had nothing to do with the conference. Here I am standing there looking at the telescope, you know, in the very place that was, a part of the recruitment, you know, connected to the recruitment for me to go to Mars. It was just so symbolic to be standing there looking at the Venus energy when, you know, this this was all sort of a part of it. And it's been building and building and building. So just to uh, kind of move through this and not talk too much, here in 2013, uh, you know, there's a predominance of transiting planets in the water signs of Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces, um, and just a lot of Earth's, like Saturn being a very Earth-bound planet, you know, ruling false authority structures, but also um, the true authority of natural law and cosmic law. When we take that power back and we become the authority, you know, from the inspiration of our higher self and unity consciousness, which is natural law and more, you know, about the balance, we have a real opportunity to move into that territory because, you know, water is so fluid and it forces us to really get in touch with our emotions and our feelings. So these patriarchal sort of planets, you know, when afflicted that are patriarchal like Saturn and Mars, are getting all this water energy. So it'll either cause a major reaction in people who are resisting getting deeper into their soul essence, or it'll really allow, you know, this major transformation to take place um, within, which will change everything, you know, as within, so without. Also, a lot of solar flares are happening, which uh, could really screw up the power grids and just the electronic controls that they've been trying to have over us. So I'm just feeling a lot of peace, you know, weird energies in the last couple of weeks, for sure. And I'm still just trying to get back to center. But I, I feel just an incredible amount of peace. And I just really feel that we've done an exceptional, amazing job. And I'm just celebrating so much and just feeling this this family of light workers and truthers that have just been doing this for so long. And when I broke free of the uh, attempted recruitment to go to Mars, that's when Project Camelot came about. So I just feel this really special relationship with you and just your story and just your strength. And I'm just like, I'm just really in a good place right now. That's all I can say. <laughs> well, that's that's great, and and it's lovely to hear all of that. Uh, Doctor Dream, do you want to answer the question as well? <laughs> yes, I was with Laura. No. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, it, I mean, that seriously for me, the last three years has been uh, pretty unbelievable. To to the point that. The uh, 36 months, 99 city, or ni yeah, 99 cities, and all this. I literally called um, the tour of love, and so for me, what I've realized I've been doing is anchoring a lot of energy all over the place, and and also, um, you know, really going out there and assisting by by you know teaching people to fish and not just throwing fish out there for them and and that's that's been the big motivation 2012 was was unbelievable on so many different levels for me um including the the further um integration and solidification of a uh, sacred union with Laura and um really December 2012 uh for us our our last event um, for 2012 was the Star Knowledge Conference um, outside of Phoenix. And um, this was our th third Star Knowledge event in 2012. Um, it's been really positive for us um, at this particular conference. Between the two of us, we spoke for t 10 hours. We had, um, you know, our um, exhibit booth and and did sessions with people also. But it was such an incredible, powerful energy being there with Chief Golden Light Eagle and the, the elders and the grandmothers. Um, and that sort of, for me, launched us as we came back uh, to California. And um, it, it really, the end of the year and the beginning of 2013, was all about um, energetically opening up um, to so much, and and for us, it it just seemed to have a um, it's rooted in in a emphasis on family, and so it was it was so incredible. My my brother and sister in law and my nieces came in from from New Jersey to be with us for the twenty first. Um, of course, um, that evening, you know the um, 
continuation of the 20th into the 21st, Laura and I um, did personal ceremony. And and as she described, it was incredibly powerful. I'm still actually processing um, the, the depth of my experience that night. But uh, needless to say, lots of... Uh, moving of energies and and um again for me it's it's been a, a personal journey of uh expansion and shining the light you know throughout my inner being to really understand the true nature of who I am and and who I came here to be and so um that's what 2013 is all about for me is is just Focusing the energies and this continued process of of fine tuning, um, not resting on the laurels of whatever yesterday was about. You know, the the sun rises again and it's a new day to to be who who I truly embody or wish to embody here. And um, that that's been the focus and it's it's been awesome. I'm so far I'm loving this year. Okay, well, uh, very good to hear from both of you on those scores. Uh, yes, it's been a very interesting time, I must say. And, I, you know, I did discuss all the incoming energies that I was feeling over the the holiday period as well as uh, the 21st of, of December and, and leading up to that, really the 12th of December on. And even before that, of course, uh, it just – was ramping up, I guess you might say. But now that we're in 2013, there is a sense uh, that I have, and I was just wondering with the two of you uh, whether you were kind of feeling it too. It, it's sort of about um, uh, that there is a steadying uh, on the planet. And, and what I got was that prior to 2012, the end of 2012, there seemed to be sort of a level of panic in, in people. Um, and I think to some degree that seems to have dissipated. Uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what I'm getting. Uh, doesn't mean that there aren't still people out there. In fact, I just heard that somebody else, I'm not going to name names here, um, you know, was starting to, you know, people like to blow the trumpet, trumpet now saying they know what the future brings. And yeah. they've been wrong so many times. It's, it's just like off the charts. <laughs> <laughs> Really wish people would stop doing that, but they do it anyway. And so, you know, they really want to feel that they know what's happening and what's coming. Um, but along those lines, I, I, there's, there seems to be a different energy out there. And I had the sense that people are going to look back at 2012 and feel that there was, as Laura said, sort of a getting over the hump, uh, feeling about it. Um, and I and I just was wondering how you guys had felt about that. It sounds like maybe you you tend to agree that there was that we have achieved something, that there is a standing, that Earth is in a position now to move forward in a more positive way, um, that we kind of uh, made it through the eye of the needle, if, if one could even call it that. That's my sense. Um, now that doesn't mean that the future is is is, you know, all uh, hearts and flowers because I'm. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not. In fact, uh, I, there are indications there are even more serious things on the on the horizon. But that, that the humanity that became awakened up until you know coming up to 2012, uh, the end of 2012, there's a sense that there was a stabilizing energy that came out of that awakening um, that is going to help the Earth move forward as well as humanity in general. So. I don't know how people are feeling, you know, on specifics, but I do know how my sense is. And my sense is there's a sense now to stop worrying about what's coming in the future so much as start creating the future and start, you know, um, living each day for the fullness that you can find there. So uh, any thoughts on that? Oh, gosh. Do you want to go first, Mark? Start yeah, I'll go ahead and, and field this one first here. Thanks. Um in <clears throat> we have a um, holistic healing practice here in Ventura, and um, so I've I've got a lot of contact with uh, people that are that are reaching out, and and here's kind of what what I've been seeing um, toward the end of last year, and 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 most certainly this month, and that's that. Um, and, and these are people that I wouldn't um, particularly say are um, 
I, I'm more mainstream um, for for this uh, particular uh, healing practice at the moment. And what I'm finding is uh, people are reaching out because they know that they can change their energetic, um, their perspective, their um, – Whatever's going on within them that's that's less than comfortable, but what I'm getting in the doors are people that just have no idea really how to start that and and where to go from it. But the 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 most encouraging aspect of it is that they're waking up to the fact that they don't need to be as miserable, depressed, manic, uncomfortable, sick, whatever it is, as they currently are. And um, so I'm finding that to be uh, to be most interesting. And then, you know, watching w- what I do is highly energetic with all the modalities and everything and just watching how it, it feels like people are moving through things a little bit um, with, with more grace and ease, um, shall we say, than than in years past. And so this this whole idea of you know getting over the hump or through the eye of the needle or something like that um you know definitely resonates with me um and i don't think it's all you know the yellow brick road from here but i think that that we've now um have more of an energetic ava- readily available to us to to assist us in in really standing in our power. I mean, that's so much of what I do is to assist people in realizing what they have available to them without having to go get trained in anything or buy any product or anything like that, just what they innately have within them. And um, then watching, you know, most of those people really kind of take off um, with that with that information and knowledge like like it is self-organizing. So it's been uh, very encouraging for me. Lovely. Uh, Laura, did you want to say anything, add anything to that? Yeah. Um, I've noticed with a lot of my client um, clients that, you know, people just really are still holding on to a lot of the programs. They're in a sense addicted to them and that's what the money system has done. That's what our culture has done. I mean, if all the entities and agendas were to disappear, we'd, you know, probably annihilate ourselves just based on the damage that's been done. Um, but, but, that's not what's happened. I mean, the consciousness has moved through the gates, so to speak, and physical reality is catching up. That's what I notice. But, you know, there is a certain point where if it wasn't for the light workers and, and, and the exposing of truth, giving people a foundation to return to, to kind of identify with or sort of be curious about, to answer some of these more confusing questions about what's really going on and what's happening energetically, you know, there, there it, it could have been, you know, a lot worse. So I'm just finding with, with people that you know, there was a lot of nervous energy, a lot of panic as far as cataclysms and the things that they've seen in movies about 2012 and all of those kind of false memes. And so there's a lot of relief. But then, you know, a lot of people who have heard that we're going to ascend and float away or we're just going to wake up in a new dimension are disappointed. And I'm just thinking this is what's so ridiculous about predictions, because it pulls our life force away from being able to create in the now. And it becomes like some sort of intelligent test where all these people that are doing predictions are trying to win some contest. Oh, I'm the one who's right. Or I'm, you know, and it just becomes sort of the superficial ego thing about and I'm not busting on everybody who does predictions I think it serves us to be prepared and to you know have some sort of sense of what's in front of us but when it gets to the point where people's belief systems buy into it and steal their creative energy from the moment just like you were saying um it kind of just keeps us in this sort of manic kind of bipolar uh existence and that's really what we're stepping out of and it's more just about you know Thank you both. Uh, Wonderful things that you're saying. And and let's pick up with Laura Eisenhower and Dr. Dream right after this message. This is Carrie Cassidy, Project Camelot Whistleblower Radio, talking to Laura Eisenhower and Dr. Dream. Uh, Laura, I think you were finishing up a couple statements right before the break related to uh, if if I could paraphrase what you were saying, basically about how people who are sort of prophesying the future tend to take people's energy, uh, well, down kind of a black hole <laughs> in a sense. And uh, that that's a real danger. Uh, that doesn't mean, and I agree with you, that there has to be a balance because this is not to badmouth certain people that are 
you know, likely if, if a train is coming down a track and you see it and other people don't, uh, it does behoove you to mention it <laughs> um, so they can get out of the way or do what they need to do to prepare. But um, so so I, I, I think it's a, a double edged sword, if you will. Um, but more than anything, when people predict the future, what it ha- needs to be is is you need to step back and do it as sort of um an observer and not get all wrapped up in the emotion of it and also get taken off track because you cannot live in the future. You can only live in the now and create the future with what you do every day. So um, I know people who have been prepping for a negative future now for, um, for probably, uh, well, let's see seven years, you know, um, it's, it's an interesting place to be in. Obviously, this is something they're playing out in their own mind. Uh, they short curtailed their sort of impact on the rest of humanity by going into kind of a more shelter, um, buckled down kind of scenario, but perhaps they get, um, they find, uh, sustenance in other places. Perhaps they've made some close friends and built some tight, uh, communities in these places. So I'm not to, not really putting that down. I'm just saying that it's one needs to think carefully before uh, going down a road where you think you're building a future based on what you think is coming as opposed to where you are now and where, um, you know, on the off chance that they're correct. And also listening to other people rather than to your own inner guidance. And this is the biggest problem is that people are not listening within, they're listening to other people and they're letting those other people uh, sort of guide their trajectory. And I think at some point there's going to be disappointment down the line if you do that regardless of what happens. Yeah, yeah, totally. totally. There's a, yeah. there's a bit of a feedback, feedback on the line. On the line. Um, um, this is, this is this the is thing the about thing. balance and this is what you said about balance. It's just so important that, you know, people understand that these are what the lessons are all about. So, when it gets really uncomfortable and people face adversity rather than fight it or, you know, act like a victim, you know, really understand it and get the message because it's about the right and left brain coming together, the masculine and feminine and the feminine energies, which have been exiled are all about embracing the mystery, getting away from the logical mind that needs to see things in order to believe it. And so we can focus, you know, more on our creative abilities, our ability to dream and manifest while also balancing it with that, you know, ability to just be logical and and sort of, you know, be strategic about what we think might be ahead, but also go back and come back to center so that we're also actively participating in the creative process because reality is fluid and anybody who thinks it's fixed and is waiting for something to happen has basically given their power away. And it's, you know, that's why balance is everything. And this is what I feel has really happened as we've gotten over this hump is um, more uh, of that stability, more of that balance. And a lot of uh, the things that people are going through right now are their final sort of lessons or just the stuff that needs to cut away for them to just really just get into that zone because it's within all of us, that sacred union balance of the masculine and feminine. It's all these distortions and programmings that have just thrown us out of whack and connected us into this false matrix that, you know, just wants to keep generating our energy away from our ability to manifest and create and be connected to, you know, the, 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 the abundance of the universe that provides for us because we don't need the money system. We have the abilities to just manifest and create and, you know, we've been duped into this whole other system. And so um, it's just important that we understand that we have abilities uh, when in balance um, and in alignment that uh, can start to wean us off of all this and, and, and give us the opportunity to see ourselves as the most advanced technology beyond anything we can imagine. Absolutely. Uh, I, uh, perhaps you could talk about what your plans are for the rest of this year. You know, I don't know if you want to talk about beyond this year, but in in terms of with uh, understanding where things have been, where they've gone, and sort of out as they're emerging, where do you see things going this year? And have you noticed a change again in the in the sort of way people are approaching the now, even? I'm going to say in terms of even the conferences, I don't know how, you know, if you've been going around and you've been touring uh, various cities, have you noticed that the energy or the approach is different now in the conferences and the way people 
are are coming forward? Or do you feel that uh, a lot of people are sort of just doing the same old thing? Do you have a thought about that? Like, what's your plan? And then what do you think other people are, are doing? Absolutely. Um, as you know, we it, it was difficult for me to take a strategic um, look as far as uh, mission and life purpose um, for 2013 until we passed through the end of uh, 2012. And now, having done that, uh, I, I think for us, um, we're as far as like the the conferences go. 2012 was a, a time for us to um, get maybe a little more discerning about uh, which conferences we're doing. Um, we're really uh, focused on the integrity of who's, who's putting on um, these events. And, um, you know, there was a time that uh, for me, I could just speak for myself. I mean, if I was invited to speak somewhere, I'd go. Um, and now there's a little more of, OK, well, you know, let's talk about it and what's the reputation of this particular conference and 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 what's the reputation of the people at the helm. And so um, we've had some lessons in the last year about what works for us and and how to put ourselves out there um, for for our mission, um, our integrated uh mission and, and life purpose, uh, what we're looking at this year is how can we reach the greatest numbers of people? And so I guess it's a little bit like I was saying before about the fine tuning of, uh, you know, we have a certain amount of energy. We have a certain amount of time. Our family is very important to us, but but we're we're very keyed in to, to the why of our existence, why we're here. And so, um, you know, we go to a conference and maybe between the two of us, if there's a thousand people at the conference, we connect between the 10 hours of speaking and this and that with maybe 800 of them. Um, and uh, we're there for four days. And, and this last conference, we came back and we had put so much energy out that we were down for three days when we got back. So not only were we gone for four or five days away from the kids, then we come back and we're not feeling well for a few days, getting our energy back and kind of pulling ourselves together. And so there's there's um, I'm I'm sort of the the the, the grounded one um, in in how we do things and a little more. Um, I mean, we we talk and agree on everything, but a little more business minded strategic laura's you know the global alchemist and and i have no idea how she does everything and being you know a partner and a mother and 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 everything she does in the public eye but um we're we're really just fine tuning our approach and and making sure that that the decisions we're making um you know give us the greatest reach and the greatest impact because that's that's what we're here for Okay, uh, and Laura? Yeah, um, I've noticed, let's see, as far as people at conferences or just kind of the general vibe that I'm getting about the things that are coming up, um, I mean, I think there's just this incredible shift is taking place. I think a lot of people aren't ready maybe to access it, but it's almost like, you know how people can see the good in people even if they're total schmucks? I mean, it's almost like you can just see the spirit wanting to just burst out of folks that are still maybe hanging on to ego or old attachments. I mean, I can see that. I can just see this sort of brightness in more beings than ever. Um, you know, they might just still be in their stuff, but I can, I just, it's just like there's a magnetic quality where everybody's spirit energy and heart is much more magnified rather than the competition and just the more superficial stuff that I can see that one sees at conferences that gets really discouraging. Um, I see, you know, less hierarchy and more just mutual respect, but it does have to do with discernment because, you know, some things take a while to die out. But as far as I'm concerned, patriarch is is crumbling and it's crumbling faster than most people can keep up with a lot of people are stuck in the rubble and it's just floating around their space they don't know where the release valve is because a lot has been released but it's still kind of there but all in all um you know this shift time is really represented you know the pentagram turning upright again the quintessence fifth element of spirit being the more dominant 
element out of all elements, which means that our spirit nature can start to mold reality rather than us being caught underneath the physical, sort of at the mercy of, you know, attacks and disease and not feeling well and poverty and not making a lot of money and just all the survival stuff and the lower chakra stuff. I see spirit just so bright and being so much more present to just shape events. And so that's really my focus um, in 2013 is to just be more grounded um, I've been, I feel like I've been hanging by threads for most of my life. Uh, I've had really bad heart problems. You know, I've, I've done a lot of work from the bed. I mean, I consider my bed the office. I, I, cause I you know, sometimes can't even get out because I'm just so energetically <laughs> slammed um, by stuff. So to me, for me personally, it's a lot about recovery, regeneration, really getting grounded and then opening myself up to just, 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 I don't know. I just feel like, Oh, we're just taking off. I mean, it's not going to happen overnight, but it, it just really is happening. And I feel like, you know, all the political stuff and the Obama and just anything going on in 3D world, I just can't even grasp it anymore. It just doesn't even, it just, it never really did. It never made sense. I couldn't even pass the government test in high school. I'm, you know, coming from a political family, it's just kind of laughable because I'm just, I, there's just nothing there for me. But even more so as far as paying attention it's just, it's like, it's just in a whole nother dimension. I don't even see it. It just, it's like in the horizon. It's just so far. I still keep my eyes on it to, you know, talk about it because there's still, you know, a lot to share and just to, to work through and process. And I'm committed to bringing as much light into that arena as possible. But I mean, I just see that, you know, the physical reality is catching up with our consciousness and our spirit energy. And um, slowly but surely, we are creating this incredible um, change. And even if people don't want to admit it, I mean, I, I personally can sense um, a lot of illumination and a lot of brightness and a lot of beings that seemed, you know, very dark and troubled before. Well, that's very good to hear. Uh, what I was wondering is, it, in terms of looking at the astrology of, you know, because Laura, I know you kind of, you do card readings and you also do uh, use astrology, right? Yeah. And um, do you have anything that you want to say about the coming months for people that are listening that might help them uh, through the next few months, uh, whether it be how they might look at the next few months on a personal level or a political level? In other yeah. words, any, any particular astrological uh, alignments or conjunctions or oppositions or whatever that people should just be sort of heads up about? Yes, absolutely. Especially today. This is such, I'm so glad you asked this question because <laughs> today is such a, a huge, uh, turning point on an evolutionary level, um, for our consciousness, for the collective, for us personally. Mars, our, our great friend, planet Mars, is, uh, making a square aspect, which means a very stressful aspect to our nodes. Our nodes represent the past and the future. The south node is the past, uh, meaning what we came in with, the resources that we draw upon, the stuff that we, you know, really got, um, immersed in, in past lives that, that is comfortable for us. You know how, you know, like Beethoven can play the piano at four. I mean, obviously that's past life stuff. So somebody's South node would be the things that they can fall back on. The North node represents where we're needing to go, where our soul potential is, what we're yearning to experience. And that comes a lot easier for some than others, depending on their natal chart. Sometimes for people, a lot of their planets are already there, which means that they've really just you know, born in that level of completion and wholeness, while a lot of people are just kind of, you know, working on integrating and bringing all those aspects together. So in a chart, you know, the south node is on one and the north node is on the other. And here today we have Mars squaring the nodes, which means Mars being the planet of will, desire, ego, um, also, you know, very warrior-like. And when aligned with the higher self, it's very much the spiritual warrior. Um, we have a major choice. And because it's a stressful aspect, it can be difficult for people to make an empowered choice. Very often it can mean that people go back into old patterns or get locked into a loop or a mindset that really doesn't serve them. So it anchors them or drags them back into the south node energy, which most souls just need to, to move away from. Those who are sensitive enough will feel the trigger of, oh, I just can't go there. That's, that's something I need to release. It doesn't serve me anymore. And they're ready to move forward. This is what today represents. Most beings are going to feel a push to just really let go of the, the old stuff on an ego level, um, regardless of what it is, whether it's healthy ego or not healthy ego. It's about moving forward uh, based on the lessons and experiences. You know, for a healthy ego, it might mean creating new experiences. For an unhealthy ego, it might mean getting into more balance, you know, getting rid of the dominance, the aggression, and being more aligned with 
it. But today is a huge day for people to make choices. And a lot of people are feeling, feeling anxiety, but, but, but recognize it as, you know, something important to pay attention to and to recognize that the anxiety is you, your higher self or your intuition saying, you know, it's time to make a, a conscious choice and to really pay attention to what you're doing with your, your will, your power, your focus and your intentions and uh, not to spiral backwards, but to really push yourself to let go and to adopt a new approach that is much more connected to higher values and integrity and unity. Um, so that's today. Uh, a little bit about what's happening and I'll just try and do this real quick. Um, let's see. Uh, there is going to be... Um, Uranus Pluto squares occurring uh, May 21st, November 1st, and what that does, it, it continues to break down all forms of psychological programming, all sorts of mind control that people have been under. Um, it starts to break down the way money has dominated so many beings, and it breaks down barriers um, in our indiv individual lives and also in the greater world. Uh, so Uranus Pluto squares are great, but for some people, it's very debilitating. It can be too much because it's very much revolution and rebirth. And if we fight it too much, because squares are, are tense aspects, which means we fight it sometimes, you know, it can cause all sorts of nervous system problems or just getting stuck in the loop of a death cycle that we can't emerge from. So when the so when those tense uh, moments come, May 21st, November 1st, you know, just have detachment. Don't don't be um, attached to outcomes. You know, just really allow that energy to clear the channels and to really integrate the fact that we are the, the creative power and force that is changing the whole game and embrace the tension because it's really power that's wanting to stream through us. It's the attachments that, that make it blocked because everything in the cosmos is on our side. So, you know, the, the, the issues that we might have you know, we, we need to recognize that it's stuff that needs to go. It's not stuff that's trying to mess with us anymore. We're really being led by the cosmos. And, um, you know, it's good to feel troubled by it because if we didn't, we're still easily controlled and we're still hanging on and we're still just, you know, immersed in the matrix and just paying attention to the news and everything. And it's sort of a lower vibration panic that has nothing to do with growth or change, but more has to do with the feed, the fear that we're being fed and the deceptions that they're still going to be pulling. So one has to notice the difference between real emotional triggers and just ones that are based on news and things that are outside of ourselves and just the programming. And we're going to have a lot of assistance to break that old way and, and, and enter, you know, real anxiety, which is our bodies are wanting to transform. Our consciousness is wanting to change. This is healthy stuff. This is, these are good triggers, you know, and, and it's more organic. So, you know, the more people spend time in nature, the more they connect with just things that are organic you know, they're already in that frequency and that'll really assist them. You know, turn off the televisions, get away as much as you can from all the EMF and, and, and just all this stuff, you know, detox and get yourself and your body into a more uh, holistic um, vibe. And, uh, you know, the tension and the things that come along will, will assist rather than just the stress of, you know, chemtrails and, and you know, just all that kind of crap. Um, Cause we're moving away from that. Uh, we're, we're detoxing and we're stepping away from that. Um, there's, you know, obviously a pull into it, but you have to buy into the program and you have to buy into the false flags and the distortions that are still lingering for any of that to even work. So instead of buying into the program, buy into the organic reality of the harmony and beauty between the masculine and feminine within, which is all about a dance. It's not a power struggle. And it's all about, you know, understanding the soul essence rather than the superficial, physical, you know, kind of stereotypical roles that have been played that have been so damaging. Um, there's other alignments. There's a grand sextile, January 29th, uh, and it's um, going to involve Pluto uh, in Capricorn, Neptune in Pisces, the moon in Taurus, uh, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. That's going to be a huge one. Um, I'll be posting about it closer to the time. And then also uh, lots of uh, solar activity, solar flare stuff. And, um, you know, things are going to be shaken up. So whatever people are attaching themselves to, you know, elect electrical power and oil, you know, all the stuff that we don't want anymore. Embrace the fact that some of this stuff is getting shaken up. And that's not Armageddon stuff. You know, it's, it's called weaning ourselves off of it and embracing something different. And it's not about, you know, camping and living in the dirt. It's about recognizing that. You know, being grounded is important, but it's not getting all primitive again. It's being grounded and awakening to the fact that we're stepping up into higher abilities that we haven't seen for thousands of years in ourselves because we've been dumbed down, that we're, you know, awakening this junk DNA, recognizing it as the dark matter and mother womb and creative force that is going to assist us in really being able to not only be grounded, but access higher dimensional energy and almost become, you know, the consciousness of, uh, 
time travel and, and teleportation with, you know, beyond even the technology. I mean, the, the technologies can supplement us to a certain point, but we don't want to be too reliant on technology. We want to understand that we have these abilities as well. Okay. Well, <laughs> that was a great, a uh, very complete and, and, and great overview of the next coming months. And I think people would really probably appreciate that greatly. Uh, Dr. Dream, just to give you a question for yourself, uh, you have a practice, you say, where people come to you and, and they're sort of in a different place than, uh, than even maybe per- before. Um, I'm wondering if you're sensing, uh, like more of an openness to change in these individuals or is there, um, you know, is there a, a lessening of, of the kind of anxiety that you saw in the past and, what is, you know, do you advise these people to, for example, meditate and so on? And are they embracing that idea? Is it helping them? Are you finding certain things are helping people more than others, certain suggestions? It, you know, is there any particular area that that is becoming sort of a focal point like dreams or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, excellent. Excellent question. One of the things that that I'm experiencing, um, we did a uh, a promotion recently with um, Living Social, and so it it was different than the people that that know about us and and come in that are you know awake and aware and and want to move some energy. And so I I got a a run of people that um, you know wouldn't normally come to someone like me, and. What I what I experienced in that time frame, um, and that was about I don't know thirty thirty different people or something like that, is that there is not so much a a, a like more of a willingness to change, but more of an awareness that change is available. More of an awareness that whatever they thought they were stuck with, whatever sort of uh, maybe victim energies that they've pulled themselves out of, that the energies have helped sort of dislodge things for them, came with it an awareness of I can feel better than I do. I can be happier than I am. There, there's something available for me that is more than what I'm experiencing now. And that's been that's been really very encouraging for me. And and but I I see it more as a um, as something that's that's been building up, but but is directly related to the end of 2012. Okay, um, thank you very much. We'll be right back after this message, and we'll be starting the second hour. If anyone has questions, feel free to put them in all caps in the chat or call in on our call in line. And this is Revolution Radio. Thank you. Well, welcome back, folks. This is Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com, and uh, this is Carrie Cassidy's show. (laughs) There she is. Hi there. I was just uh, trying to separate my cat and dog from uh, getting into a fight here. No, they don't get in fights, but they were uh, getting crazy. Anyway, um, hi, this is Carrie Cassidy, Project Camelot Whistleblower Radio. We're talking to Laura Eisenhower and Dr. Dream. Dr. Dream, we were kind of finishing up with with your statement, but I don't know if you had a couple of other things to say about that particular, you know, answering that question or if you wanted to move on to another one. Um, One of the things you asked is, um, you know, were there particular things that I'm, um, so to speak, and I'm doing hand quotations, uh, prescribing to my uh, clients and things like that? you know, one of the, the the wonderful things about me being a uh, multiple modality healing practitioner is I've got all sorts of tools available to work with people. Um, we do quite a bit with essential oils. And, um, you know, everything we do it comes from an um, alternative, holistic view, um, looking at all aspects and, and levels of, of what a person's going through. And so uh, we've been getting some really incredible results from the essential oils, um, uh, uterine uh, tumors, tumors in the uterus, uterine fibroids going away, people canceling um, surgeries. Uh, It's it's just been a real treat to be able to help people 
um, you know, like I mentioned before, just sort of move through their experience with a little more grace and ease. We're we're all under so many different pressures. I mean, just and let's face it, just being an embodied human um, is enough pressure to to just about undo any of us <laughs> on some days. And so, uh, you know, working with people that um, are uh, uh, manic with manic depression or bipolar and and really being able to show them how they can not you know get rid of this energetic that they chose to to carry in this in this life but how to manage it and so this is all really about taking our power back taking control of our lives looking at at our experience and saying well I'll be vocal about chemtrails, but let's face it, they're not going to go away tomorrow. So I don't want to spend my time being a victim to chemtrails, Fukushima radiation, this, that, and the other, and whatever else is going to come down the pipeline. I need to find that place where I can be empowered. And, and I have an actual presentation called The Alchemy of Life, Raising the Frequency of Our Daily Lives, and it's it's all about that, how to use essential oils, how to, um, you know, really pay attention to what we're putting into our bodies, what we're putting into our minds, where we're focusing our attention and creating change from that place where nobody can really stop us because we're taking control and we're not so readily giving up our power like has been the, the pattern um, in our society for so long. Okay, well, that's good to hear. Uh, you know, it sounds like you guys are both doing a whole lot. Uh, I'm, I do wonder whether people are focusing more, um, on, on the sort of problems at hand in, in their everyday lives or whether they are focusing at all on, uh, things like meditation and using that energy to, um, sort of be a, by that energy to change their lives. Do you know what I'm saying? So I, it's one thing that I ha, I kind of stumbled on in Egypt and, and was just kind of staring me in the face a lot when we were there was the idea. And I mentioned it on your show, and I've just been dwelling on it, my own self, uh, thinking about it uh, periodically, that if people would allow more things to happen and to come through meditation um, rather than conscious thought, uh, then I'm thinking perhaps that we would change our reality in, in ways that we hadn't anticipated and that might be um, surprisingly positive. So I, I, I'm, I'm really, just I, wondering I, I, if you guys do that, if you, if you encourage people to meditate and, you know, in your practices. I want to, I just share a, a quick story of, of, you know, how we're working with the tools. And, and for me, everything's about the inner journey. I mean, you know, let's turn off all the distractions of our outer experience of reality and let's go within. And so as an example, I have a lot of people come into the practice who are ready to um, dive into work through process, release their core issues. And, um, you know, most of that experience is highly emotionally charged. Um, and so one of the things we do is we take um, the essential oil of Tulsi basil, which is holy basil from India, and we vaporize it. So they, they're literally inhaling vapor of the Tulsi basil because the story about Tulsi basil is that um, when you're working with the holy basil, drinking it, smelling it, putting it on as a topical, um, it's very difficult to hold on to negative energy. So when people come in, we'll vaporize the Tulsi basil with them. That takes the negative hooks out, the negative edge out. I'll put frankincense oil on the bottoms of their feet. Our, the bottoms of our feet have more receptors for essential oil than any other place in our body. Frankincense is all about, it, it's a very high vibe oil, but it connects us to spirit and, and, and takes us out of like this general um, lower dense reality and, and sort of shoots us up out the crown chakra. And that sounds then, wonderful. Yeah. And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll, 
some sound and vibration, a crystal bowl or chimes or something, and ask the client to just get quiet, listen, the emotional charge is out, they're connected to spirit. Now, what does source or their higher selves have for them in terms of a message? And so we're very much... Um, you know, guiding people to to look within and the inner journey and to to find that quiet space, whatever that is, whether it's yoga, meditation, um, you know, whatever works for them. I've literally prescribed clients to get Instagram on their cell phones and do a gratitude walk each morning, taking a picture of flowers, trees, the view and share it for people that have a little trouble getting, um, you know, into sort of a, a um, energetic that's sort of happy and joyful. And and it's uh, it's amazing to, to see the results from that. That's wonderful. And Laura, do you want to address that question? Yeah. Um, well, I you, utilize the Zodiac, of course, and the tools of uh, uh, tarot. But my goal really is to free people of the wheel um, by pulling them into the center, more the zero point energy. So I, uh, you know, just help them to understand what agreements they have, where uh, they most want to go and maybe what's blocking it or hiding it. Um, you know, go in terms of their creativity, their passions, their truth, and to give them the courage to, you know, embrace it and to not um, feel like they have to answer to the system and play the game. Um, I'm not encouraging people to, you know, stop voting or paying their taxes or anything like that. Um, that's obviously their choice. But, you know, just really enhancing the stuff that is unique to them, that makes them authentic. And because uh, if we all did that, uh, that's really what oneness is to me is diversity and harmony. It's not about, you know, some kind of oneness that that just separates us from that. Of course, that would be the New World Order. Um, now, uh, I also uh, utilize the cards to help them understand that, you know, we're made of all these archetypes and to not uh, be looking too much outside of the self as far as um, – I mean, I mean, it's it's sort of an interesting thing because as I expose a lot of the you know hidden history and the extraterrestrial presence, uh, the higher races and the uh, more malevolent uh, forces and entities and ETs that uh, work with our government and affect us in our consciousness, um, I also encourage people to understand how they relate to it and how we are made of all of it, and that we've been here from the beginning, and so we don't know, you know, for all we know, what. We, we played roles in past lives that connect us to uh, certain agreements. Uh, we, we're holding on to stuff. We have receptors that still allow some of those energies in. And we have those creative forces and archetypes within ourselves. And it's up to us to bring harmony to them, to allow the ones that are positive and uh, more conscious of, on, the, on the highest level, the Christ Sophia consciousness, the Shiva Shakti, whatever you want to name it, um, but more the higher principle of union to be the dominant force, um, to allow these sort of Luciferian and more just darker energies to be put in their place and to, to answer to those energies rather than the other way around. So what I like to do is sort of utilize the larger picture and, and bring it back to the person so that they can work the energy on the inside and not be the effect of everything on the outside. So once taking personal responsibility and sorting it all out and then emitting a frequency of resolution and wholeness to then – you know, feed into the collective that allows the collective to sort of feel, you know, something in the air that is not um, a lower programming or a mind control thing or some level of harassment um, or, or attack, uh, but more, you know, something that's inspiring and uplifting that that can, you know, bring a soul into just that that grace and ease moving into that new energy, um, you know, because the information can get a little bit overwhelming. But I but I think most are, you know, both are important. So it's just a balancing act. You know, in my outer work as a speaker and then my personal work uh, working with clients, um, I just sort of, you know, the, the external goes to the internal, the internal goes to the external. And so to me, it helps me balance. And for individuals who are in touch with my work and become my clients, they recognize that, you know, they're not here to talk to me, be, to be a victim to the stuff I talk about, because I also talk about the inner work. If they're going to call me up, they're going to be doing the inner work and they're going to be, you know, sorting themselves out on the inside to lose the hooks to some of these darker uh, energies and to wake up um, what I consider to be you know, the, the global immune system, the spirit energy, the thing that uh, rebalances because, you know, in one body we have diverse organs um, 
they're all very different, just like star systems and different races and beings all over the, the galaxy and beyond. So, you know, they all have to work together. And the only thing that can bring them into balance is consciousness. It's, it's not the organs that decide. It's, it's our consciousness and our thoughts and our beliefs and our behavior. Um, and that's what's going to really sort things out on, on the larger stage as far as, you know, these different deities and these fallen angelics and, and just uh, some of the dramas that have taken place in, the, uh, in, in those worlds. Um, um, okay, to recognize well, that we're me, made of all that. Let and that's me ask how I work you. It. Okay, I, I appreciate that. And let me ask you both. Uh, this, this kind of uh, segues into a question that I have about your personal dynamic. And, and it's up to you how much you want to share of this. But what I was wondering, just in terms of, of you know, your background, uh, Laura, and the whole Mars, uh, sort of the way the Mars has impacted your own life, uh, possibly your sense of your interaction with various uh, ET visitors, races that have come into your awareness on a personal level. And Dr. Dream, the same thing for you. Is there anything that you noticed or were able to or became sort of a revelation for the two of you when you, you know, initially met as a couple? Um, is there any specific uh, sort of dynamic that came from prior lives and or prior awareness of your maybe ET selves, if you want, if, you know, that's one way of putting it, you know what I'm saying? Um, is there anything you want to share about that? Because I think that people in are, are very curious about couples and the dynamic that goes on between them. And there's, it's a really fascinating dynamic that there's not a lot of couples out there sharing with other people. You know what I'm saying? They share with each other, but they, they don't necessarily share their dynamic with other people. And I think that, in terms of learning the group dynamic and learning what it's like to be more than one individual interacting with other individuals who are starting to realize their star nature, you know, if you will. In other words, their, their prior lives on other planets as other entities, et cetera, et cetera, and how that may be impacting their relationships. Right. Um, Gosh, when I met Dr. Dream, I was uh, leaving the Free Your Mind conference in Philadelphia. And, I mean, I, I don't like to use the term rock bottom because it sounds like, you know, I, I pulled myself out of the gutter with a bottle of whiskey. But it almost felt like that because <laughs> um, I just – the energy, the attacks, just, you know, just overcoming a lot of the Mars stuff and the recruiters. And, I mean, I feel like I got over the hump with that, similar to the hump we got over December 21st. But – there was a lot of remnants of it. There was just a lot of really difficult energy. And even though I'd gotten away from it, I was just in a lot of, a lot of uh, anxiety and pain. But my whole life, I mean, I wrote a book about, um, it's called the, the Grail of Venus. And really it's about finding that inner union, sacred union, heroes, gamos, really merging the masculine and feminine energies. And I've always known intuitively that to have an outer partner that represents that, you have to do the inner work and you have to really find that within yourself. And I struggled with that because I really felt I needed support being a single parent of twins while almost getting taken off planet, you know, dealing. I mean, I can't even put it into words. It just it was difficult to survive every day. To me, it was just successful to all be breathing at the end of the day. Um, that to me was like, you know, pat on the back, Laura, you rock. You're you're you know, we're all alive. Um it was hard. It was so hard to mother these children through all this um, without being able to talk about it. There was no Project Camelot. Um, and you came on the scene right as I was moving away from it. And it like really saved, it just saved my sanity and just really helped me ground. And it just, I can't tell you how much uh, it did for me. Um, so I, I was still in, you know, relationships that just weren't really working. And I just said enough already. Um, it's all about my connection to spirit. It's all about, you know, my children and just doing my mission. And that's fine. Even though there's just a, a, a strong intuition about sacred union, the importance of that, um, it doesn't have to be you know, in the physical with somebody, because it's it's a personal thing. This is not necessarily about relationship. Sacred Union and Heroes Gamos is very much an inner process. Um, but anyway, so after leaving the Free Your Mind conference and feeling pretty whack and attacked and uh, just trying to cope, and back then I was still a drinker, and that was just how I dealt with some of the frequencies. I, it, but, but this time, I, I it was just a little bit more to the extreme that I was ready to let all that go, because um, it just wasn't serving me. And Dr. Dream wanted to do an interview with me, and uh, I told him I missed the plane and because uh, I was just such a wreck. And um, then he's like, oh, well, I'll just pick you up at the airport. I'm like, oh, wow, he's going to pick me up at the airport. This is interesting. And um, right before I, uh, I, I took the plane, my friend Michael Falsetta took me to the airport, um, 
And uh, I was leaving my body. I mean, literally, I was leaving my body to the point where he, you know, was crying because I was, I mean, I was going, my whole body went numb, and I was starting to leave. And I told him, you know, I'm like dying. I'm like, I'm, I'm leaving. And, and he knew it, too. And he was freaking out. And he's like, please don't take her. Please don't take her. And then I was just like, I had to laugh because it was all so dramatic. Here I am, like, I'm gonna die. And like, I have to catch this plane. And I have an interview. And everything's just so messed up. And I fell on the pavement. And I was really about to go, and I was like, okay, well, at least I need to leave on a happy note. So I was, you know, laughing. And uh, I started to touch pressure points in my back, and I started to do Reiki on me. And, and with Michael's assistance to anchoring me, I made it. And little did Dr. Dream know that I just went through all that. I mean, I have, like, cement or pavement <laughs> or dirt on my arms, you know. I mean, my hair has got, like, pebbles in it from the ground. I mean, God knows I'm a mess, and I smell like a bar, and it just it's just gross, right? And uh, my phone's about to die, and here he is picking me up. I come, I go down the escalator, and he's standing there. And I want nothing to do with the relationship. Um, and, and, you know, he wasn't in that space either. But, you know, we lock eyes, and, and I'm like, okay, that's cool. You know, I'm just feeling the familiarity. And then I get kind of near his aura, and I'm just, like, walking close to him. I'm like, no, 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 don't walk too close. First of all, you probably smell. Um, and I don't mean to reveal so much. I know I'm kind of putting myself out there a little bit, but, um, but anyway, so I, I felt that draw, but you know, I get in the car with him and we're about to do an interview and I just, I told him, I have to tell you what I've just been through. I'm, I'm a wreck. And, and he just, you know, used tuning forks and really worked the energy with me and I'm shuffling my cards and I'm crying and I'm just trying to work all this energy. And, and, um, anyway, we did the interview. He really enjoyed it. He was really just, he seemed to be, you know, just really interested in what I had to share and then he offered to give me a ride home. And in the in the vehicle, he asked, you know, well, while you're shuffling, why don't you do a reading about us? And I'm thinking, you know, there's no way this man's interested in me. But, you know, maybe he thinks that we're going to collaborate or something. So, sure, I'll do a reading. Um, I thought, you know, he's probably scared and he needs me to do a reading because he just – I mean, cause I just – I was not I, – I just – I did not want to be around anybody. I just – you know. So, anyway, I did a reading and I'm – all these really powerful cards and the lover's card. And I'm trying to interpret it without, you know – doing any overlays or making it seem like, you know, we were going to be a couple, but it was very clear. And, you know, just being around his presence and just his, how grounded he is and how conscious he is and how much he's just been on his path. And, you know, we both determined that we've been devoted to, you know, the divine feminine and masculine or just working that energy and just really doing the inner work. And what really, you know, brought us together was that personal commitment that we had, we had both made to ourselves. And uh, that's really, you know, part of the compatibility and just, you know, why our dynamic works so much is because we made that personal commitment to our own self, which makes it really easy to be together because, you know, we're always, you know, going in, we're in, inside and taking responsibility for our part and taking it to a whole other level that a lot of relationships aren't willing to go. And we're just really working the energy, trying to create archetypal harmony, trying to bring the masculine and feminine into a healthy balance. He's trying to, you know, work out the patriarchal stuff. I'm trying to work out, you know, my, you know, own, own self-destruction tendencies and just whatever, just to strengthen myself again. Um, and just that isolation and just, just, sort of, you know, just bouncing back from a lot of my stuff and, you know, that mutual commitment to ourselves, you know, created this incredible commitment to each other. And, uh, as far as, you know, past lives and former, um, selves that we identify with, I mean, I've always identified, you know, with, uh, the Sophia Magdalene energy, not so much in an incarnation form, but just the fact that it's a universal energy we all have access to that I've devoted myself to. So it felt very much a part of that mythology. And, you know, we all have that connection on a soul level, but I've really, you know, put myself in major focus in that um, awareness for a really long time in uh, past lives as well. And, um, you know, felt a familiarity where not that he rescued me in a past life, but he could see me because how this guy ended up having feelings for me, able to see through just the way I was um, and just really get to the core of my heart and my truth and, and, and have interest in me in that moment when I was at my worst it was really touching. And he came over to my house and he checked in on me. And I'm like, I bet he does this to everybody, you know, and I didn't want to consider myself special in his eyes. And I'm just like, and then I had to interrogate That's him great. to make sure. And I'm like, I'm sure Dr. Dream's not an agent with a name like Dr. Dream. I really doubt that he wants to take me off planet. So yeah, after really. interrogating him for a couple months, you know, okay, he's not connected to CIA. He's, you know, cause I was just a little bit paranoid still, you know, we really burst out the other side and um, have dumped so much of the old and um, are emerging, you know, really strong within ourselves and very complimentary uh, uh, for each other. So I'll just end there. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Laura. That was that was 
uh, delightful. And uh, Dr. Dream, I want to give you a chance to answer also, but I also want to highlight uh, for the listeners, uh, again, if you want to ask questions, put them in the chat, and also uh, you can call in. I'm, I'm, I'm actually looking to see to make sure that if we have somebody holding for a long time because they go crazy when I do that. <laughs> Uh, so we we might have to pick you up in just a minute, uh, Doctor Dream, with your your side of the answer. But is somebody holding a mod? Uh, no, ma'am. They hung up. Oh, they did. Okay, they they just gave up on us. Okay, that's that's fine. People can keep you know trying to call in and trying to uh, write questions in the chat, and we will try to get to you before the end of the program. So uh, now, Doctor Dream, go right ahead and answer that question for your own self. Carrie, I have to tell you, I absolutely love this question um, because we've approached uh, it, it. It's like we've we've really allowed the energies of our relationship um, and and the 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 truth of of what it's like for us to be in a relationship. We've really shared that with people. Um, we we have a presentation called the inner divines which is all about the inner divine masculine and inner divine feminine but it it's also based on our story and our experience and so we the last time we did this was at the um the uh star knowledge conference in in phoenix and the night before i said to to laura i said you know i mean maybe we should ask them not to film it tomorrow because we get so vulnerable in what we share um, because neither one of us ever wants to be on a pedestal um, in in a, as individuals, and certainly we don't want our relationship put on a pedestal. Um, and 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 that's just the energetic that we approach life with. You know, if 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 it's not truth and it's not transparent, then it's not worth. It's not worth sharing, and and I think we've all had the experience of of people standing behind this facade of what they think they should portray, and what it does is it's it's a disservice to anyone that that you know they come into contact with, and yet isn't that what the whole you know celebrity worship and and all this is about? And so we're we're so dedicated to our our path and our process that we we really open up uh to sharing it and i have to say i when i when i met laura i had gone through about a 6 or 8 month process of understanding my own inner divine masculine and inner divine feminine and um at that point i was pretty much in the in the mindset of i think i've played out the whole relationship thing this life um, I'm, I'm 48 and, and at this time in my life, it's all about me traveling the world, meeting people, presenting, doing my energetic experiences and, and not having any of this other stuff, which maybe I've seen as a distraction or this, that, and the other. But I got to tell you, as, as I watched her come down that, that escalator and it's not about the, you know what my eyes saw, um, although what my eyes saw is amazing. Um, it's really, really about what my heart felt, and it, in that moment, because it was the last thing that I expected to experience was any draw. I mean, I was just, you know, um, Ilya, who had uh, from Portal to Ascension, who who had been assisting me for about a year, said, you've got to interview Laura Eisenhower for the radio show we had. And I said, yeah, I, never, I, I don't know anything about her. But, um, you know, if you think she's good to interview, let's let's reach out to her. Um, and I mean, that that was it for me. I, I sat in the front seat of the car. We did the interview at the Denny's parking lot outside of LAX. And <laughs> I mean, she told you the shape she was in. And this was yeah. two years ago. She she was talking pretty fast back then. My <laughs> jaw was on the floor mat. I had her passion, her her energy, the the depth of her emotional connection to Gaia to to the energies of this planet to her mission I was I was so 
touched and inspired and I mean just, yeah, everything was spinning around. I mean, and, and when I said, you know, I, she's shuffling just incessantly, and I'm like, so you know, and once she explained what she's doing, I said, oh, that's that's interesting. Why don't you just shuffle about us and see? And I mean, I could tell that that she was sort of. Um, you know, languaging it in a way that would be um, not so triggering or anything. But um, it's it's our story. That's, and I love that's it. That's great. Um, well, thank you both. That that's actually that was a lot of fun to hear your answers to that. Uh, we'll be right back. We're at the bottom of the hour. Uh, we've got a half hour to go. And uh, I'm sorry, uh, area code two hundred three. We'll we'll answer your question as soon as we come back. Thank you. Okay, this is Carrie Cassidy, Project Camelot Whistleblower Radio, and we're talking to Laura Eisenhower and Dr. Dream. Uh, very fun to listen to your answers to that. Uh, so, area code 203, if you're on the line, we can certainly take your question now. Hi, Laura. Hi, Carrie. I've been following both of you for many, many years and love your work and, and really like some of the... Um, uh, kind of touch points that you hit upon and, and what's really happening in the world. I had a couple of questions. One is, um, Laura, you had mentioned you're on a computer a lot, kind of in bed and caught between the uh, third or fourth or fifth dimension and somewhere in between and not really re- relating to where things are right now on this planet. I, I kind of feel the same way, but what do you recommend for detoxing from chemtrails, radiation from cell phones, uh, computers and Fukushima um, that you've uh, had some experience or knowledge about? Well, um, I think, you know, wheatgrass, green food, clay, you know, things that just absorb toxins, things that just, you know, can gather up heavy metals. Um, gosh, I mean, fasting is a good idea. I've fasted. Uh, uh, really, you know, Dr. Dream can answer this one because he talks about it a lot in his talks, but I'll just touch upon it just real quick as far as what works for me. Essential oils. Essential oils are amazing because it's really about, you know, building the biofield. Uh, what essential oils do is it just keeps our frequency very high, and I just want to let him answer because he is just really all about the essential oils. Um, but, uh, you know, the thing is, more than anything else, it's just the frequency we hold. Um, in the lower density, it's it, when we hold our emotional body or our mental body in the lower density energy, it's much more easy to absorb toxins and to be affected by everything. But as our friend David in an interview we did with him reminded me of, because I've said this before, the physics are different in higher dimensions. Um, we are able to transmute this stuff so quickly. Uh, we're not as easily affected by it. Um, just everything is different. So, I just keep working uh, the energy. I go real deep and I go real into really, you know, deep zones because it's not about getting really ungrounded and leaving the body. Um, but, but going into deep processes and allowing that to just flow and cycle higher energy into my being to just keep the regenerative forces going. It's like a death cycle but at a rapid pace because it keeps um, one moving forward sort of like an engine because we are lifting the veils between life and death. And uh, so I, I just focus on that um, frequency and laughing and, uh, you know, just doing things that support uh, my body, like I said, the clays, the green foods. Um, but I, I don't like to be too strict either because that creates stress. And, and that's where the essential oils come in. I mean, literally, I smell these oils and I say to Dr. Dream, wait a second, aren't I, supposed to have a, aren't I supposed to be worried about something right now? Because five <laughs> minutes previous to that, I was. And I just smell this and it just like it, it really – um, I can't tell people enough how important it is because, you know, the, the, this comes straight from the earth. And, and, it's, it, it, and that's what works with us most. We have receptors to this earth energy. Our souls are made of earth, air, fire, water. We are made of, you know, all these essences. And uh, our bodies need to connect with that. Um, like animal spirits. I mean, even animal spirits. We're, we're made of all these energies of nature. Uh, nature is the soul. And uh, we're, our souls are a microcosm of that. So it's very important to work with earth energy, uh, very pure earth energies. Um, and that's, that's what I recommend. And keep the frequency high, laugh, and just recognize that we are heading into higher energies all the time. And anything that tries to yank you away from that is a deception. You can just command your space to just not allow it in and just keep, keep moving forward. <laughs> Laura, what particular essential oils um, can you cite as an example, or Dr. Dream, would you cite as an example that what Laura was talking about, that you just kind of close your eyes and smell it, and it and it gives you this sense of calmness? And I do have one follow-up question after you answer it. Perfect. Well, doTERRA, um, and he'll tell you all about doTERRA, an incredible product. So yes. we, we're, yeah, we're really... Yeah, I use it. <clears throat> nice. Oh, excellent. We're, we're really focused on... 
um, what it takes. Laura mentioned the biofield, which is the energetic field around every human. And we're really focused on what it takes to always have a strong biofield. And so we address this on many different levels because we have to. We have we we address it on the emotional level. Where where are you in your emotional body? Because that everything to do with a constricted or an expansive energetic field around you. And the amazing thing about the essential oils is that they have the ability to raise our frequency, our body frequency. It's literally um, they, they've, they've developed equipment that tests all this to raise our body frequency literally at the snap of a finger. And so um, – if you send me an email, if you go to drdream.com, my, my email address is there. I'll send you a link to um, this presentation that I've been doing and I keep um, adding more to called uh, the, the Alchemy of Life, Raising the Frequency of Our, of our Daily Lives because there's some great information in there and um, it, it's available to all of us right now. And so this is, you know, and, and then the other thing about it is be careful what you own, you know, in your mind. I mean, don't look at the chemtrails and say to yourself, I'm being poisoned right now because you'll be like these people I see that are pulling, you know, these fibers out of their skin. So be very careful where you go when you see these things. And if you if you're looking at chemtrails and you're constricting inside you need to do a little bit of inner work so so that's not happening because when you're doing that it's it's holding an energy inside your body that really isn't what you want like energy attracts well, like energy if you're looking at chemtrails and you're saying this is terrible for me and I'm the victim to shadow government and illuminati whatever's doing this it's you're you're really drawing that energy in so it's it's really important we take our power back and we don't own what we don't want to you know, fully experience or draw to ourselves. Well, it's really interesting that you're saying that about the chemtrails because about two years ago, I used to look up at them and, and here in Fairfield County, Connecticut, it, it's unbelievable what we experienced last summer, but I used to like raise my middle finger and swear at these airplanes going across, but <laughs> now I look up and I feel sorry for these people. I really do. It, it, it's, it's a shift that occurred. Uh, Laura, you probably know what I'm talking about, but um, that, that's what it's, it's, it's really interesting that you said that because that's how I felt for a long time now. Right. You know, the important thing about the oils, let me just say this is that they, they will, if, if you get the right oils and, and we, we really are huge fans of doTERRA, but make sure if you don't get doTERRA, just make sure you get therapy great oils, but they will like literally force the toxins out of your body. We have one that supports the respiratory system, and I'm not going to get into the results right now, but I mean, the results are incredible. So anyone can reach out to us. We, we um, suggest different protocols with oils and different tools and modalities um, based on uh, what people are going through, what their challenges are, their core issues. We use astrology and all sorts of other tools to help us you know, kind of prescribe what's going to assist someone um, in this part of their journey the most. Um, do you Thank guys you. have Thank a you website so, so much. That, that, you know, do you have a website where you can refer these people to go to purchase these oils or do you have a particular place you go to purchase them so you yeah. can encourage people to go? Absolutely. If you go to our website, healthyfamilynow.com, um, we have links to um, products to uh, assist people from the damaging effects of EMFs. We have the essential oil links um, and everything like that. But but don't hold back. I mean, my cell phone number is on all my sites. Don't hold back from giving me a call or sending me a message um, to get more information because um, we don't want anyone to just blindly follow what we say or anything like that, but we want to get the right information out there so people can make an informed decision. Um, that's the most important thing. Yeah, and then and then walking around barefoot must be pretty good part of your protocol too, I would guess, right? Yeah, yeah I love this whole concept of of earthing and and getting back to what's important and and you know losing the the. Uh, you know, the, the soles of our shoes, so to speak, to, to give the soles of our feet 
you know, an actual actual connection with the earth. I think we've in the concrete jungle and everything else, we've we've lost that. And so, yeah, I think that's that's vitally important. Definitely. Carrie, um, Carrie I have one. Carrie, I have one yeah. question for you. I live very close to um, uh, the whole Sandy Hook thing, and what we're hearing and what we're experiencing is not what we're being told. There's, there's something very, very um, odd going on with the whole thing, and the facts don't add up. I'd like your take on, on the whole thing with Sandy Hook, if you don't mind. Oh, God. Um, well, I I mean, it would be fabulous for you to send me any information that you're getting on a local level, because that would augment uh, the investigations we've been doing. But generally speaking, uh, there seems to be, uh, well, obviously, a lot of false information being put out on purpose. Uh, I believe that there was a definite event that happened. The information we're getting is that there was a three men, uh, I guess, uh, possibly Israeli or another, um, or, or pro- now they're saying that they sp- spoke another language. We don't know what it is. We're trying to find out. In fact, I'm about to put a video on my site, a short excerpt that was sent to me. We're trying to determine. It sounds like it might be Romanian, um, some kind of language being being spoken. There were three men that were photographed from a Russian satellite, apparently. Um, it, the evidence is that the child, uh, the young boy who said to have done it, was, was actually killed the day before, uh, as was right. the mother. Um, and that... Whoever, you know, then he was dressed up and just delivered to the scene, I suppose. Um, the, you know, the, this whole thing is has been it's so convoluted. I think some of the stuff about actors is 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 wrong ended and, and incorrect. Uh, there may be right. some aspects of that that it, that are correct. Um, I think one of it, one of the energy things is that's going on in terms of a. Uh, you know, magical act that is then supposed to draw your energy to the dark side is the very fact that they're trying to, and I wrote about this on my blog, the idea that you have to hold two or more contradictory inform- pieces of information in your head at the same time. What that does to people, especially if they're not used to uh, like having a higher vibration and, and really thinking for themselves, it, it actually freezes their brain so that they no longer want to think about it at all. And it, it just throws them off. <laughs> um, so you have to understand that this is part of what they're doing. They don't want people to think about it. They want, they want them to dwell on it in confusion. So what I would just say is, is, is one of the things to do is, is simply send positive energy to the parents of whatever children were either, you know, uh, abducted and taken to underground bases and or Mars and, you know, may not be dead at all. Um, uh, by, and, and the other ones that, that may have been sacrificed because human sacrifice is, is something that is very, very strong in the whole reptilian uh, side of things that is running things on the planet and has been for, for centuries, although they're losing their grip. And that's very obvious. <laughs> Uh, but but things are are continuing along those lines. I, I got some recent. I'm, I mean, I don't want to dominate this actually because I have guests. But uh, there's more to it, and I'm still investigating this. Suffice to say, um, I will try to do another show on this in the near future. But thank you for your other questions because I think the these this information about radiation and and chemtrails and how to deal with it. I think very good information coming from Laura Eisenhower and Dr. Dream about this, the essential oil side of it as well. Um, I just want to say that in terms of raising your vibration and understanding that you are, your body is under your command. It's not under the command of the people that do anything on this planet. And so that you can decide what it is you let into your field and what it is you, you just don't. And um, from my perspective, my point of view, uh, I think if you listen to the Aradia interview and you understand that these people are living off of radi- radiation, you understand that the human being, we don't know all the capabilities of what it means to be human. Too much has been kept from people so that you can decide what you're capable of. And it may be that you are adept at dealing with all kinds of things and that you don't have to age and you don't have to do all the things that they tell you you have to do. It's, it's more about breaking the programming. And once you do that, then anything new that they want to throw in your face, it's just their old stuff. You just have to continue on and, and do your own thing. And I think 
I don't want to continue here, but thank you for caller very much. Um, let's see if we have another caller or someone in the in the chat room or if something that Laura or uh, Dr. Dream want to talk about. We have no other callers. Okay, thank you very much. So, Laura and Dr. Dream, are you still there? Yep. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay, very good. Um, so, is there anything else maybe you want to go into in terms of, you know, we have, let's see, uh, about a less, little less than 15 minutes on the show, and just in terms of your thoughts on maybe even carrying out, carrying further what I was just talking about in terms of of someone is asking a question, here, why is it obvious that the reptilians are losing their grip? Um, I actually think the more they, the harder they try, the more evidence there is that they can't keep hold of us. <laughs> they don't know what to do. They can't put the genie back in the bottle, so to speak. It's it's really interesting. It's like it's the what was described to me by somebody at one point was it's like holding a ball that's filled with air under the water. Have you ever tried to do that? <laughs> yeah. It won't stay under the water. It keeps wanting to pop back up to the surface. So it's kind of like that. That's what they're trying to do with us. They're trying to keep that ball under the water and in, you know, dumbed down and and depressed and so on and so forth. When that ball realizes that it is eternal (laughs) and that it can do anything, um, there's no keeping it down. There simply is none. And, um, and, And it becomes obvious in your own life. The more you sort of embrace that, how it how it manifests. And that's why I speak the way I speak, because I've seen it in my own life. So I know it to be true. But you've got to experience it to know it. And um, and I I think that Dr. Dream and Laura could could address this as well. So go right ahead. Yeah, I know that they're losing their grip. It's it's um, I think that we're all uh, the ones that can determine that based on the way we feel energetically and the things that we sense. And if we're sensitive enough and we're intuitive enough and we have, we, we, we've been um, aware of what's been happening. Um, it, it's just, it, it just, it, it becomes obvious. I mean, it's, it's also similar to trying to put a lid on a, vol- on a volcano. I mean, there's, there's a force within us that, that is so intelligent and so infinite and so wise. And I mean, we, we, um, we have memories of that. And I mean, they've taken advantage of us and the fact that we've been reincarnated and the that we have amnesia, uh, but you know all that is being restored because it's just gone dormant, but it hasn't been destroyed. And you know our experience and just our growth um, in these incarnation cycles of the trial and error of of karma of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I mean, was part of our contract to go through this to understand negative polarity. And the negative polarity has played the role of the dark teacher. And I don't even like to use that term anymore because it's been extremely unfair with all the manipulations and mind control. It hasn't really been about choice between good and evil. It's been about being able to break free of incredible manipulation and um it's been an incredible test i don't think it's been set up this way to test us but this is just what ended up happening and it became a test and we're triumphant because we are connected to our primordial parents we have that inheritance it's in our dna and consciousness is what upgrades it and what awakens it and what restores it and um that trumps everything it trumps genetics it trumps races and belief system and you know this conquer and divide mentality and all these wars and false flags are to just separate us from each other the power the power of unity, of unity is uh, what they've tried to keep us from. Uh, there's a feedback loop. But Four, no, 604, shut off your radio, please. Yeah. But anyway, it's it's obvious to me, and um, I've, I've really felt under, you know, when it wasn't obvious, when I knew that they did have a grip, I could feel it. It was hard to survive and even breathe. Um, so to be where I'm at is a good omen to, to see all of us coming together, exposing the truth and the amount of interest that is out there, um, and the fact that we're not getting killed for this anymore. Um you know, because I even told the Mars recruiters, you know, you've done this before and I'll keep incarnating and I'll get, you know, more and more pissed off each time. Death is not an obstacle. I mean, death, that's a, it's a joke. I mean, we are a part of what's behind, you know, what's in the unseen world as much as in the seen world. And, and we are so limited by thinking that this is all we got. Um, I know they've lost the grip. So it's a knowingness that can never be ripped away from me. And that's all I can say. Um, can we have the caller mute themselves until we actually take their call? Uh, Dr. Dream, did you want to say something? I mean, <laughs> I love what, what Laura said. I, I love how you, you know, even introduced this question. And, and I, I'm just, it's the human spirit, just no matter how it's been repressed and, and, and the programmings and everything else, 
it will rise up above all this. I don't know exactly how it's going to look or, or the form that it's going to take, but I have a tremendous amount of belief and faith in, in the opportunity that is available now for the collective, or really at this moment for the awake and conscious and aware collective. And, um, you know, I, I just think we're in a, a, a good spot. You know, the, it's, it's, it's not easy street, but we're in a much better position than we have been. I just want to say one thing. The, fem- the, the mother goddess energy, and it, it's not about, you know, a female form as much as it's about the cosmic and earth body and the underworld womb, the mother womb, the cosmic womb. She birthed all this stuff. So this is this, being in alignment with the galactic plane is being in alignment again, having the earth access right in alignment, which means all this energy is available to us. This trumps everything um, that these lower entities are trying to do. I mean, they've been trying to play God, but we've triumphed because we've stayed um, – you know, in in the process enough to recognize what we've needed to wake up to, and enough of us have woken up. And now it's just about it, just you know, being like wildfire, and it just being contagious, and it just it's just, and that's what it's doing. It's rippling out, and it's just starting to really move stuff, and um, it can't be stopped. It's already begun. Okay, well, thank you for that. Uh, absolutely, and and that was an answer to the question about the reptilian uh, sort of losing their grip. Uh, it is quite interesting to, to watch the struggle continue. What I have to say is is another thing, and you can both address this, which is what I'm noticing is is that the dark side is having um, having to reveal themselves more and more. And so, in essence, when they reveal themselves more, they reveal uh, their their sort of vulnerability and inconsistency, and 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 you begin to see how when they try something and it doesn't work. They're sort of made, I guess, if you will, more human at the same time, because in essence, they're just not, you know, they're not successful. They're not making it. And um, and 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 in many ways, whenever you see people around you waking up, it's just more indication that they're not what they're doing is not working and they have to keep reapplying and reapplying the chemtrails. They can't just do it once. They have to do it every day without fail. And when they stop, then people start, you know, bursting out like sunflowers and, you know, going out and, and, and smelling the, the flowers and having a, a wonderful day and so on and so forth. In other words, or even in spite of it, they're having a wonderful day. And, and it just must be really depressing being on the dark side right now. Because, yeah. <laughs> you know, because, I mean, I've seen it. I have to say, I'm seeing, seeing it all around me and, and I saw it in Egypt. And, you know, it doesn't matter how hard they try, the light the light sort of supersedes it. Um, like in Egypt, they tried to keep people out of all the, all the places and they, and they put out all this propaganda saying how bad, it, you know, the, the rioting would be and how bad this and that. And then we, the people that did go and to braved through the nonsense um, had like the most amazing time. And we had like more space and more room to meditate and more peace and more, you know, more of everything. So, in the end, it was a good thing for us. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, 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 you know, it's it's really fascinating. And the people that were meant to be there were there. And I think maybe that's a, a lesson, you know, to to humanity, that no matter how dire the prediction, whatever it is, that if you can kind of let go of holding on so tightly to, oh, we've got to survive, oh, we've got to have our food, we've got to have this, what have, you know, and just realize that, um, hey, It's going to be there for you. You know, if you if you just allow it, it will come and 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 maybe not grabbing on so tightly. You know what I mean? Yes. I I mean, it's just like a a doctor saying, oh, you'll never be able to walk again. And how, you know, of course, that being can walk again if they really want to walk. Uh, we have to believe in our power. We have to believe in the the fact that we can make miracles happen. And we can't just like sit there and listen to everybody around us because they're in that programming of limitation. And um and that's the thing. It's 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 we're magical divine beings. And uh, the more we can step into that and not fear it and the more we can step into our power and, and face that darkness without thinking that it's evil, but standing it's the fertile soil and creativity that is just abundant. Um, it's just, you know, people are going to just feel liberation and lose the addiction to some of the. Uh, To some of the, I mean, some people just don't want to let go. I mean, they just still want to be a victim. They just still want to feel like there's something wrong, but it's almost, yeah, but it's there. It certainly is there. 
Absolutely. Dr. Dream, do you want to say something to that? Um, I, I don't really have anything to add. I mean, I, I just, uh, I, I'm just in such a place of, of encouragement. Um, and, and I guess, you know, part of my thing is, um, th- that's the filter that that's one of the filters I choose to look at things with and, and, and attract, um, toward me. I, I, I look in my moment to moment activities in the, in the outer world. I look for inspiration. I look for people that are in their passion, that are actively sharing their gifts, um, and I'm seeing it more and more, and I'm seeing more and more people stepping up to it, and 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 it starts with the dissatisfaction of where they're at or how they're currently living, and then the realization that something bigger and more expansive and more heart centered and 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 more in the true nature of reality waiting for them, and um, that that gives me what I need to get out of bed in the morning and, and, and go through my day. You know, I, oh. I couldn't do this without those examples. That's awesome. I, I just want to add, um, I was uh, tuning into the dark forces and I think that they're saying to themselves, how the hell did they pull this off to the point where they're almost maybe even giving us a little bit of respect that we've been able to actually um, do what we've done and, and, uh, and, and get through the other side. I just, I, I feel that because some have played the dark role for a reason to be a catalyst. Others are just plain evil and they just don't care. But I feel almost some kind of respect um, that, and, and just that they're shocked on some level because, like you said, you almost feel sorry for them. They've been just working so hard to screw us up, and uh, <laughs> and now they're just like, damn, they're good. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it is a choice. I think that people can make that choice. I think that's that's the bottom line, uh, it, which doesn't mean that it's always going to be easy for people. Sometimes they've chosen a long time ago, and they have to kind of live through what they chose. Um, realizing that that's kind of what they chose and they need to kind of um, sort of deal with it. But at the same time, I think that that there is that thing where if you look for the opportunity sometime during the day or even at night to allow for something um, new to happen to you, to come into your world, to some new ideas, some new fresh way of looking at something. In other words, I think that that attracts, it will attract it to you and understanding how, how powerful we are in terms of we co-create reality, which means that we will determine what comes our way in a big way. In other words, a chemtrail can go all over the sky, can go everywhere, but can actually not go into your field if that's mm-hmm. what you, what you wish and, yeah. uh, what you, what you put out there. So, um, I also wanted to say that there's something about water, and I, I've noticed it lately, and I think that there are more and more people sort of tuning into the power of water and water that's in motion, such as in rivers and lakes and in the ocean and so on. When water's in motion, it is actually clearing itself as it goes, and it, it has powerful energetics just by virtue of that. And um, as people will know, they're now selling water that has been, you know, in motion and so on. And you, do, you, do either of you sort of have you gotten into that? Yes. Yeah, I mean, and especially with the predominance of water um, in, in, in the astrological stuff. I mean, it, it just allows things to be fluid and it's about the purification and we're 70 percent water. And, uh, you know, the detoxing has to be in our emotional bodies as well and the stuff we're hanging on to because we can still be victims just like somebody who's still hanging on to a bad relationship, like what their ex did to them and they just are never able to move on. We got to move on from what we've been through and allow the waters to be purified and because that'll flow and it'll break down everything and uh and the frequency that we hold, you know, is the ultimate attractor, just like you said. Um, so, yeah, getting the elements back in, in sync with each other and in, in their highest expression. Um, just we're going to get be wrapping up the show very quickly. Someone is asking uh, Laura about Val Valiant uh, Thor. Do you want to say anything about that? Well, yeah, that was um, a being from Venus that supposedly met with Eisenhower and Nixon. Um, and Eisenhower was very... 
uh, interested in sharing what he had to say, but the government shut him down. That's what I've heard. But of course, I wasn't there. But at a conference, I met somebody that uh, whose husband is in jail, who was a tour guide for Valiant Thorn, validated his presence. But I, I don't want to go out too much about it. You can contact me. But Dr. Dream has some thing I know he, he wants to share as well before we, we close. Thank you. Go right ahead, Dr. Dream. I think uh, just really wanted to, um, you know, give some touch points of how people can um, follow up with us and um, find out more. Laura's site is CosmicGaiaSophia.com and then um, DrDream.com, DrDream.com is sort of a jumping off point for Tour of Love and um, Healthy Family Now. And all of our events uh, are listed on our sites, and um, you know we're we're really looking for uh, people to come out and see us, and and um, just continue with this this process that we're all you know a really beautiful important part of. Carrie, when you were talking before, um, I thought of something I saw earlier—a graphic with a Rumi quote that says, uh, "What you seek is seeking you." And um, I really like that. And it, it just reminds us to, to just really pinpoint focus on, on what we're doing and, and the energy we're holding because it's, it, it's, it's what's drawing our experience to us. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Laura Eisenhower and Dr. Dream for coming on the show. It's, it's been a joy to have you here. And uh, I, I hope that uh, people ha- would stay in touch with you and Please do feel free to contact me, come back and and come up back on the show in the future. And thank you again uh, for the great energy that you bring. Um, Thanks, everyone, for listening. Any last words, you guys? Just uh, lots of gratitude. Uh, Thank you so much, Terry. It's always so fun to be here with you. And uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carrie, for everything you do. Uh, You are an inspiration. Oh, we love you. (laughs) Okay, you too, both of you. And thank you so much. Okay, good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you for listening to Revolution Radio.